Uh, Monday and today's mad. What is that noise? Why is that happening? Uh, clone the. What you? Let me get my train of thought. Sorry. They need to be able to. Oh, you, got, you got me on the hop. I can't. Give me time to think. <laughs> Cut it. Cut it. I can't think. So you do like that. I Hey, this is Joe from Queen Technologies. Today is Tuesday, so I'm starting work today in theory, but I work all weekend anyway, but that's another video. This is half term week, so I'm trying to cram in as many jobs as possible within four days. Bank holiday is obviously good for people who want some time off, but for the likes of myself, it's a bit of a struggle because you have to try and cram. You've obviously missed the working day. I'm currently at a school now. We're doing a conversion. That's done, not a conversion. We're doing a changeover. So this school that I'm at, we're installing nine laptops. It's a one form entry school that means one classroom per year group so it's a small school they've had some old desktop pcs and we're going to be moving them to laptops this will enable teachers to kind of like have a bit more flexibility take their laptops at home bring it back into work and work anywhere you know that working flexibility which i think they do want to have you know i would want to have working flexibility i wouldn't want to be stuck in one location i like flexibility these are hp probook 440 this is generation 9 which is currently or the, i think this is like last year gen or this year so this should be just this year gen spec wise intel i5 the 12th gen so that means that the latest chips currently on the market at the moment 8 gig of ram 256 ssd wi-fi 6e so it's a good model and hopefully it will perform and work really well for the teachers and they'll get longevity from them these are going to be the staff members laptops teachers and they're going to be connected to a docking station i'll show you that okay cool so these are the Docking stations, these bad boys. Okay, so this is the docking station, which I'm going to open up for you so you can have a look. Origin. Now docking stations, these kind of docking stations are able to power up the laptop at the same time as well. So you don't need to add a charging plug, which is, I'll show you, which is this one there. And you don't need that when the laptop is plugged into this docking station, it will charge the laptop while it's plugged in. And it plugs in via USB-C, which is at the back. Yeah, these are very, very good. And it enable the teachers pretty much to use a USB cable USB cable, so this will be at the back, this will be at the back of the docking station, and then all they do when they bring their laptops in, they will plug them into this USB port here, this one there, and that's it. And then it will connect to the interactive whiteboard, done. It's literally like a plug and play functionality, and this is what I wanted to give them when they move from classroom to classroom. So it just has that continuity and that flexibility of working and taking their laptop wherever they want to take it, come back, plug into the classroom, and then they can start delivering the curriculum, delivering their lesson. Good morning guys, hope you're well. Still at the same school. What day today? It's Thursday. So just finalizing the laptops, which I started at the start of the week. They all seem to be working well. They're ready for install. The next thing now is to remove the desktop PCs from the classrooms and replace them with the laptop and the docking station, which is this one here, which is this one here. I'll show you an example of what we're working with here. So there's seven laptops going into seven classrooms. Yeah, it's one form entry school. So that means it's one classroom per year group, so reception all the way to the year six. And uh, these are the machines which we'll be using. As you can see, they're quite dated. Some of them are running Intel Core Duo 2, which is like 13 years old. Yeah, it's just making sure that there i set them up properly <laughs> so yeah i'll get cracking and i'll start obviously setting up so you could have a look
All right, so turn up the docking station. Okay, so the connections on these are VGA, which is unfortunate to a certain extent. So I'll show you, this is a VGA cable. So we plug everything into the docking station. So the ethernet port, the display port, the sound, and obviously the power supply to power up the docking station. And then all you do realistically is plug this USB-C cable at the back of the docking station into the laptop. Well, I say the back, there's a USB-C port there, plug it in. Now this, charges the laptop as well so you don't need to have a charger plug a charging cable plugged in which is good and the light now you should see the light come on on the docking station and then you should see a light powered on the laptop to indicate there's a um, power yeah so all the teachers pretty much have to do is plug and play so the docker station deals with all the cables and they all they need to do is plug in one cable and it connects an interactive whiteboard straight away and this will be the same setup in every classroom so they can literally unplug plug that's it and walk away with the laptops go to have ppa take it home come in and plug again it really is a plug and play feature and i do believe that the teachers will enjoy that process and really have a bit more flexibility of like working from anywhere within the school instead of kind of like being rigid if they want to go outside and work they do have wi-fi outside just next to the school there's some benches they can in a nice warm day or they can work anywhere in the school where there's wi-fi so i was just going to test it and see if the split screen works straight away uh, turn on the uh, projector and there you go and it's duplicated the screen straight away it did even do the extension which is great let's test the sound You know when you try and factor in everything? Didn't factor in that. Didn't realize they were still using this. But let's make sure music sounds working. That's the main thing. Okay, cool. Remember to turn the amp on. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the sound working, which is great, but I just realized the problem where these old boards still use serial ports, which is like an old school connection. Think of it as an alternative to USB. So with these old machines, it has a serial port connection right there, but obviously those connections, they no longer exist. So this board uses for the pen to work on its pre theme board, like interactively. If they do, then I have to order seven. Uh, these things happen. Sometimes you miss stuff. You shouldn't really miss anything. But the school are upgrading these interactive whiteboards anyway. So this year they actually are in a process. So they might just wait instead of actually having the USB converters until they upgrade these interactive whiteboards in the summer. Okay, let me crack on. This is the fifth classroom. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of things to kind of move. So the app, this is the PC, and underneath that is amplifier, and the amplifier obviously connects to the speakers to amplify the sound. Some people still have that kind of set, some schools, sorry, still have that kind of setup. I'm a fan of like, simplicity when it comes to like workstations and worktops. So I think the teachers will be appreciative of, of how much desk space they will get moving from um, desktop to a laptop. Because when you have a desktop machine, you have to add a lot of other equipment to enable the interaction to work from the board to the monitor. Well, not the interaction, for the image to work. So you got these splitter boxes, which splits the image from the desktop PC to the interactive whiteboard. At the back of it, you've got like VGA ports. So basically that's three cables. One goes in the back of the monitor, one goes connected to the projector, which displays the image on the interactive whiteboard. And then the other one goes directly into the back of the PC. So you've technically got three cables running behind the desk. So it technically it frees up some space, which I think is a good thing. You can still add stuff and what will probably happen is that, yes, the teachers will be like, yeah, there's more space that I could put more stuff on <laughs> and then make the desk unfortunately messy again. <laughs> so it'll be a change for them next week, Monday, when they come in because they, uh, because obviously they're used to desktop scenario. So they'll have to get used to the laptop and the docking station feature. So what are we doing now? We'll just kind of get rid of the dust. Oh, I 
cool. So let me look for the original cable. I think this is the original one. This is the cable which is connected directly to the back of the projector. Long cable, adapter, long VGA cable and an adapter. They will be getting new interactive whiteboards. This is the board and the laptop. So if you look at the space, they've pretty much saved. Yeah, so in theory, you could put this back up here and that's it. Now, the only disappointing thing, the amp is quite big. All right, so yeah, it's a bit wonky. So I'm gonna try and fix that. They're not using an interactive whiteboard. They're just using a whiteboard. And there's my colleague Naz. She works there. Hello. Lovely lady. And she works very hard and she's Give me a hand. I procrastinate well. <laughs> Good morning. And it's Friday. Friday feeling. Wrapping up this job that I've been at all week during half term. It's been pretty much straightforward. As you can imagine, it'll, there'll always be some sort of kind of teething problems, but there were small teething problems. So this is another classroom with the docking station in. And then you've got the little cable. we we'll plugged into the laptop, which I'm going to do now. One of the members of staff informed me that there's a specific software what the staff members use. So I'm just gonna run around and install them onto the seven laptops quickly. I'll just make it so obvious to making sure they print as well, making sure they can print. And then the interactive whiteboard works with it with the sound and the vision. So it's just more or less finalizing this finishing up testing today. I'm just quickly going to test a GP update on this one. Brian this bad boy up. Making sure that the power's on, the preferences, great. Software, great. So I'm gonna log in as a test user. Test user's called Joel. <laughs> just to see what the teachers see when they log in, if they've seen the right things, if they've seen the right software, are they accessing the right folders? So I, I log, so I create an account in Active Directory, like a testing account in Active Directory, where the teachers log in details sit, and I just basically mimic what they what they see to make sure everything works. All right, so it's on, which is great. Something's missing. Why was it? It's an educational software, which I cannot remember. All right, ready to print. And we're gonna see if test print works because I was having problems with another one. So we're gonna see if it works. All right, so it's something going on with that one. I think the only thing I could do is test it after, which I will. So I'm just gonna install the software which is missing, and then move on to the next one. All right, cool. This is Joe from Queen Technologies and today is Monday. And today is Monday with a bang because they're coming back after half term and there's problems. Why? Because during half term, people have works done, buildings work or electricians switch off power. And unfortunately, you switch powers off, they switch things off like servers, switches. And then when you put them back on again, sometimes they may not start. And then some people as usual, <laughs> I have to get their passwords. It's only one week. Only one week, guys. One week. Yeah, so now I'm at another school with a scheduled visit, covering for one of my colleagues. This school also has our ITC suite. You know that I love my ITC suites. There's 30 PCs, and then the staff or the teachers, they have laptops. So all they do is take their laptops with them, and they'll plug them into this docking station, HDMI, USB-C. It will connect to the interactive whiteboard and they could actually demonstrate what they need to demonstrate. So yeah, that's even better as well. You know, they could actually demonstrate what they want in the classroom, take their laptops with them and then plug it right here and start delivering the lesson. So the children have structured learning when it comes to IT or computing at this stage. They shouldn't just also get it in secondary school, but they should also get it in early ages. And then these will help them, guide them further in any kind of progressive career they want to be into because there'll be something with a device or internet access where therefore they'll need to know. All right, so I'll show you around the school kind of briefly if I can. And I've got a few jobs to do, so let's get cracking. Okay, so this is the photocopy machine which I've been trying to print to, but unfortunately it wasn't working. I had a quick look. It looked like there was a specific print job which was causing the problem. So all I did was restart the spooler, cancel the print job, and voila, 
started to work. So you print, it holds the job, and then you enter in your code, then you'll see your job and then you release the job. This is the best way to save on wastage, as in, because what normally happens sometimes, staff members unfortunately print and then they may not need a job, but unfortunately they printed it and that's wasted paper and money. Anyway, another happy customer. Let's go to the next one. I've got the new system, which is called Sensor Cloud, which is a management control system for the computers. Basically, you can control all these computers on this platform and our computer lead she uses this when she's trying to get the children's attention or she wants to just you know wants the children to concentrate instead of trying to look at the interactive board they could actually look directly into the screen and so I'll show you. you can select all screens and then you press start what you should see is whatever's being displayed on a main pc should be displayed on the students pcs which is pretty cool but you could also do things like lock the screen or you could actually if you want to share someone's specific work you could grab there you could say oh that student's done real good work I want to show that students work to the rest of the class. You could use that as well. And this is all cloud-based. You could actually use it. It's basically running from the internet. So before it used to be like local installations, but now it's all cloud-based. So yeah, all fun. All right. See you on the next one.